Is one salt better than another? If I hear Himalayan pink salt one more time, I think my brain is going to turn into a giant cube of Himalayan rock salt. Whether people bring up Celtic salt, Redmond's real salt, Himalayan pink salt, the one thing that is commonly spoken about is that it has a better trace mineral content and it's also less processed than modern table salts. The main difference between a rock salt and a sea salt is the sodium to chloride ratio. The sea salts tend to be less salty in regards to that percentage. And the rock salts have calcium in the place of magnesium. So if we look at the trace mineral analysis of Himalayan pink salt, the calcium is going to be about 0.5% and the magnesium is going to be less than 0.1%. It's the opposite for the Celtic salt. The Celtic salt has 0.5% magnesium and 0.1% calcium. So definitely an interesting interchange there. And if you do want something that has a more concentrated sodium content in the rock salt, you can definitely taste that difference. But since I don't really think there's a considerable nutrient difference or a benefit from a mineral perspective to consuming either one, yes, you could argue, okay, the Celtic salt does have more magnesium, but the amount of magnesium in the salt is so insignificant. It's 0.5% of what the salt is. So I don't think it makes any difference whatsoever in the context of your whole diet with the amount of electrolytes you're getting from eating several pounds of food per day. What we can talk about is which one tastes better. So let's discuss each of these individually first. The Himalayan salt is usually harvested with dynamite, I believe, in the Himalayan salt mines. It is a finite resource. I have heard negative things about the types of labor used to harvest this salt. Celtic salt is when they have the salt beds and you know the ocean comes in, it goes out, the sun dries out the salt beds. Celtic salt is the unfiltered salt. So usually they scrape the top of the salt off and that salt is very white and clean and pure. But the salt that is not filtered is the gray Celtic salt and that gives it more flavor from the mineral content. Uh, Redmond's real salt is allegedly from an ancient mineral seabed in Utah. And here we have Fleur de Sel de Gourand, uh, arguably the most famous salt in the world. Uh, this salt is from the Guérandai region of France that is known for its salt. Uh, these are very large flakes. What this salt is, is the top of the Celtic salt scraped off from this specific region of France. Uh, in regards to pricing, this is usually the most expensive uh, the rest of these are fairly affordable. Uh, I do have two different Celtic salts here. Uh, I believe both of these Celtic salts are from France, but let's taste them individually on their own, and then we'll put them on some meat. So I'm just going to sprinkle some Himalayan salt on my tongue. It doesn't really have a punch of saltiness. It's, it's mild. I, don't, I wouldn't say it's too super salty. This, this, the Celtic sea salt definitely tastes more of the ocean. It tastes brinier. I get more of a pop on my tongue. So I'm going to try the, that was the Selena Naturally Celtic Sea Salt. Now we're going to try the Eden Sea Salt. Oh my God. This is the sea salt that I've used for a while. And the reason I use it is because it's very pungent. Uh, out of all the salts we use so far, this by far tastes the saltiest. And... I think this is mostly due to the grind. Uh, when the salt is ground finer, uh, it tends to be it tends to taste saltier. So now I'm gonna have a little bit of the Redmond's real salt. This one is actually about as salty as the Eden salt. It's just not as powerful up front. It's not as much of a punch initially. And the, the Redmond's Real Salt is a very fine grind as well. 
So now we're going to have the flakes of the Fleur de Sel de Gourad. Yeah. This stuff is the most pungent salt out of all of these. And it's partially because of the flake and the grind. These are very large chunks. And it's meant to have that explosion of salt in your mouth. That's what this salt is designed to do. Uh, but let's put this on food because I believe the results will be drastically different. Here I just have a slice of beef belly. I'm going to put some Himalayan salt on it. I mean, it's, it's nothing really special, uh, just like I thought before. Uh, you know, it has a mild salinity, doesn't really have a pop up front. So now we're going to do this Celtic salt. I like it more than the Himalayan salt, but uh, it's still, you know, nothing special. Has a little more salt up front. The Eden salt is a bit more pungent than this salt. So, so far I definitely like the Eden salt the most on the food. Now we're going to put the Redmond salt. And what I've noticed is the Redmond salt and the Eden salt are ground very, very fine. So, there's a, a likelihood that these two will taste the salties out of all of these when put on the food. It's just as salty as the Eden salt. As I said earlier, it's the same. It's not as salty up front. So let's try the uh, let's try the fleur de sel de grand on the meat. The fleur de sel has a very balanced saltiness throughout the taste because you have these big grains of salt on the steak, and you take that first bite, and they pop a little bit, and as you bite through the meat the fleur de sel releases its flavor. So it's a more consistent seasoning. I don't necessarily know if I like it more though. So I'm going to do one more comparison between the Eden salt and the Redmond salt and see which one I like more. So the Eden salt, very salty up front, and then the salt flavor fades away a bit. This is tough, man. This is tough. Guys, I really didn't want to like this Redmond's Real Salt, but... Okay, we can safely say these two are out. Now, the Eden Salt, the Redmond's Real Salt, and the Fleur de Garand. I think all of these salts are excellent salts to have. The Eden Salt, is something that's very salty up front and the salt flavor doesn't really linger that much. So to me, this salt would be perfect on a steak that you pre-season. So let's say you dry brine a steak in the fridge overnight, you know, you sprinkle salt on it, you let it dry brine. This is a great finishing salt, I think. The Redmond's Real Salt, it has almost as salty of a flavor up front as the Eden Salt, but the saltiness in the Redmond Salt lingers as you eat the food. This might be also because the Redmond salt is ground very, very fine, even finer than the Eden salt. So I think the Redmond salt is a great option for just general salt usage. If you didn't season your steak ahead of cooking, I think the Redmond salt is a great option. And the Fleur de Sel de Garand, uh, it's a bit of an understatement how great of a finishing salt this is. The evenness and the balance of the flavor that this salt gives to the food is, is way different. It's not nearly as salty up front but it maintains its saltiness consistently throughout. Uh, none of these other salts do that. Uh, the Redmond salt is a little salty at first, but then gets saltier. The Celtic salt, the Eden Celtic salt, is very salty up front, but then it fades away. This is consistently flavored throughout the bite of meat. So uh, definitely different culinary applications. I encourage you guys to try these and see which one you like the most. The Himalayan salt and the Celtic salt, yeah, maybe they're better than table salt from a taste perspective, but I don't think they come close to any of these. The one factor that we didn't really account for is the freshness and the grind of the salt. What I could have done today was I could have taken like a pestle and mortar or a spice grinder and ground each of these up, but 
wouldn't that defy the purpose of purchasing the product? I don't think anyone's going to buy this product and regrind it up to refreshen the salt. So I've been sitting here using this Redmond salt on my meal, and one thing I really like about it is not only is it a really, really fine grain, it's super dry. So you could take a very tiny amount of this and spread it very, very evenly over your steak. So if anyone's looking to reduce their salt consumption drastically, the Redmond salt is a great option because of how fine the grain is. Even though the Eden salt is very fine, if you take this Eden salt and you try to sprinkle it, it's very clumpy. It's hard to get it over. So maybe if I threw the Eden salt in the dehydrator, it would, it would spread as easily as the Redmond salt. But since the Redmond salt is very, very fine and it's very dry as well, it's great to reduce your salt intake because of how evenly it spreads on the meat and how much flavor it adds in such a small amount. So thank you guys for watching. All of these salts are on my Amazon. You can probably find them in your local Whole Foods. I'm sure they're cheaper on their individual websites if you buy in bulk. If you guys do want to support the channel and have maybe some personalized questions you'd like to ask, Patreon is a great way to do that. All this stuff is down in the comments, guys. I'm on Twitter, I'm on Instagram. So if you guys want to see me argue with people on Twitter or post cute selfies on Instagram, definitely follow me. I am doing live streams on Instagram every day this week at 2 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Last but not least, if you guys want to reach out to me for one-on-one -on -one consultations in regards to improving every physical aspect of your overall health that you can do in your day-to-day -day life, you can reach out to me via email or through the contact form on my website below. You guys enjoy the rest of your week. Now stop asking me about Himalayan salt. <laughs>